Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,369. Hey, if you want to download this Excel file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we have an amazing video here, and I couldn't figure out which title to use. Either count ifs to count entered results for a particular shift in date range, or count ifs to count not empty cells with four criteria or conditions. Now, this question comes from Rose at YouTube, and here's the question. Here's the data set, too. Formula which will count non-blank cells in column C. That's this column right here. Non-blank means something has not been entered if column A equals a particular item and column B equals a particular item. More specifically, formula which will count the number of results entered for a particular date range on a particular shift. I scroll down. Here is an example of the data set, date, shift, result. And because we want a particular date range, we're going to have to have a start date and an end date. And we're also going to have to have a shift number. Now notice that's one, two, three conditions. Not only that, but the fourth condition will be, is there something entered in the result column? So this is going to be equals the count ifs function. Now, what's great about count ifs is it can count with one or more conditions. You just have to put the criteria range, then the criteria. Next criteria range, next criteria. Now, for criteria range 1 and 2, we have to ask two different questions of the same date column. We need to ask of every date in this column, are you greater than or equal to the start date? And are you less than or equal to the end date? So for our criteria range, I'm going to enter this whole column. But watch this. I'm actually going to click Escape. And I want to show you a great trick. Since I'm going to have so many ranges to enter, why don't we just give this column the name Date, this column the name Shift, and so on. Now, we could manually do it. I could highlight this, click up in the name box, and type date. Then I would have a name that I could go find in the name manager, and I could use that date in any formula. But there's an awesome trick. If you have the names of your columns above the columns, you can simply highlight names at the top, columns, go up to formulas and over to Define Name Group and click Create from Selection. Now, I do this so often, I know the keyboard. And you can see it there in the screen tip, Control-Shift-F3. So I'm going to do Control-Shift-F3. Now, when you do that, you got to be careful. It wants to be polite. It thinks we want to name each row also. And I definitely don't want that. I just want the top row. Click OK. Now watch this. I can use the drop down and select date. Oh, that is so cool. I could actually use this as a go to feature. But now we're just going to use those names in our formulas. Now our first range, I'm going to type date. And look at that. There's even an icon for our define name. It's a gold dog tag. So I'm going to down arrow and tab. So there we have our first range, comma. Now the criteria, we need to ask the question, are you greater than or equal to the start date? And when you have comparative operators and you're joining them to formula inputs in the cells, you have to put the comparative operators in double quotes, greater than or equal to. Notice there's no greater than or equal to single character like there is in math. We have to put two characters in. Equal sign always comes after the greater than or less than, and double quote. Now we need to join that, so we use the join symbol ampersand, which is Shift 7. Then I simply click on the start date. Now that's a relative cell reference. As I copy down, the formula will always know to get greater than or equal to whatever is in this cell. Now, sometimes when you're learning comparative operators for the first time, this construction is hard. But notice, the bigger side is pointing away from this cell. So it is actually pointing towards the whole date column. And it will ask the question of every single date, 
are you greater than or equal to that particular date? Now we enter a comma, criteria range 2, date, down arrow, tab, comma. And now criteria 2, in double quotes, less than or equal to, in double quotes, and ampersand to join it to our end date. Now we have equal signs on both of our lower and upper limits. That is because there's the date and there's the date, and both should be included for this particular interval. All right, comma, criteria range three. I highlight the entire shift column. And now notice I can enter in that defined name either by typing like we did over here or simply highlighting. It knows that that range is now called shift, comma, relative cell reference. That's shift number, comma. Criteria range four, and then a highlight. And look at that, there's result, and then a comma. Now we have two ways we're going to do this. The first way is we're going to assume that we're always entering numbers 0 or greater. So for our criteria in double quotes, I'm going to enter greater than or equal to. And since we're assuming that this condition or criteria will never change, we're just going to type it into the formula. Notice the difference here and over here. If the number will never change, you still have to put the comparative operators in double quotes, but also the number. Over here, because we definitely want the ability to change that as a formula input, because it's coming from the cell, we have to use a cell reference. Then we join it. And that will work. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Now I can come over, and that little green square box in the lower right hand corner is called the fill handle. When I move my selection cursor close, it changes to a crosshair or angry rabbit. I can double click that, and it sends it down, copying the formula all the way down until it sees an empty cell. I click in the last cell, and I'm going to hit F2 to put it in edit mode. I am verifying that all of the cell references are looking in the correct place, and they are. We could manually verify that each one of our counts is correct. I'm going to highlight the entire range for our first lower and upper date. For shift one, it looks like one number, two number, three number, four number. How about for this count of three for shift two? One, two, and there's an empty cell, three. So it looks like it's working. Now, what if I wanted to ask the question not as a number greater than or equal to zero, but I wanted to ask the question, is the cell really not empty? Maybe I entered the word 2 here. Well, I'm not going to retype the whole formula. Let's copy this in edit mode, Control-C, Escape, F2 to put it in edit mode, Control-V. Well, everything's the same except for criteria 4. And the criteria that we enter to say, is the cell not empty, is double quotes and then the comparative operator construction for not. That is a less than and then a greater than symbol typed one after the other. And then end double quote. Yes, that seems strange, but count ifs always interprets that as not empty. Close parentheses. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. We get the same count here because they're all numbers, but if I type two here. That one is not going to work because we assumed that the entries in that column would be greater than or equal to zero. This one works. Not only that, but if we had minus one, now that should be counted if the numbers were supposed to be like that. I don't think they were. I think it was always going to be zero or greater. But of course, that one's not going to work. This one will. All right, I'm going to Control Z, Z. There you go, a little fun with counting when results have been entered, given a particular date range and shift number. All right, we'll see you next video.